In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to our program, Treasures. We'll continue commenting on the second epistle of St. Paul to Thessalonians. In the first chapter, we explained how he is praying for his people, encouraging them for their faith, for their love, and focusing on the reward in the last day for those who stayed strong in their faith and they faced persecution many times because of their faith and also the bad ending of the wicked people, the total destruction forever to stay in hell in fire forever, eternal punishment for those who refute the knowledge of Christ. In the second chapter, he will focus on the uh, things will happen before the second coming because some people said at that time that Christ came already but no one could see him, the second coming. So people got confused. So he's now explaining that, wait a minute, he's, he will come but many things should happen before his second coming and he will focus on the Antichrist because people knew that someone called the Antichrist will come, but they did not know much about him. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, the coming of our Lord, that's the last coming, the second coming on the clown, the end of life, uh, and our gathering together with him, because from this minute we will be with Christ forever in his kingdom. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter. So that's, you know, quite clear now that people are trying to shake the face by letters, by words, by spirits, and these false teachers are troubling the church in Thessaloniki as if from us, because, you know, they started to say that the apostles are saying, so people cannot communicate easily with the apostles, so they believe their words, and the apostle never said false teaching. As though the day of Christ had come. The day of Christ did not come yet, because Christ came to save us, came for redemption, came to be crucified and he uh, went to heaven he will come again on the cloud just for the judgment let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first so there is time called the falling away time what the forefathers called it apostasy so the period before the last day will have this falling away from God because of persecution. And the man of sin, that's the Antichrist, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. You know, the Antichrist was mentioned in many books in the New Testament. In Matthew 24, chapter, Christ himself spoke about this time and the Antichrist. And also, in the book of St. John, the letters sent by St. John, he mentioned these Antichrists. Also in the book of Revelation, St. John spoke about the Antichrist and the dragon, um, you know, revealed by many ways in the New Testament. Also Daniel in the Old, Old Testament mentioned this character of the Antichrist who will take many people after him to be against the real Christ, against the truth. He called him with many names here. The man of sin, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all what is called God or that is worshipped. So the Antichrist will consider himself as the real God. He will say, I'm the real Christ. He will do miracles. 
people will admire him, but he is working with the power of devil. So he will persecute the real Christians. He will offend all the good believers. So that he sits at God in the temple of God. He will sit in the temple of God. Somebody may say that, does this mean that the temple of Solomon will come again so the Messiah, the false Messiah will sit in this temple? Not necessarily because the temple of God are the church. So he may stand in many churches saying, I'm the real Christ. And people, because of their false, you know, uh, knowledge, they may believe him because he will do miracles. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? So this teaching was not new. Actually, St. Paul and all the apostles received it from Christ himself. And that was the holy tradition, the holy church teaching everywhere. So St. Paul saying here that I already mentioned this before. When I was with you, I spoke with you about these things. And now you know what is restraining. So Christ as if restraining the power of devil not to let the Antichrist appear soon. That he may be revealed in his own time. In the will of God, with the wisdom of God, he could see the exact time of the Antichrist because this time will be very tough time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. This does not mean that the devil is not working. He is still working, but not with the full power at in times of the Antichrist. So lawlessness is there. People still following devil in many other ways. But the full picture of the um, man of sin, the Antichrist, will not re be revealed except in the last period of time. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. God, you know, preventing him from doing all the bad things because devil in his plan wants all people on earth to follow him to hell. So God like restraining his, his power. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. Although this man will be powerful with the power of devil, but still you cannot compare the power of devil with the power of God. So simply the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. This man, actually he is a man because some people believe that the... Antichrist or the false messiah will not be a man, maybe he's like an army, he's maybe like an idea. No, no, actually he should be Christ um, in his likeness, so he should be a man. And also from a Jewish background, and also he will do miracles, also he, he will have his own teaching, but you know he will support devilish things. <clears throat> and uh, he will attack all Christians and he will make a war against all believers in Christ. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. So it's the picture of the work of Satan. The devil will put his power in this man with all power, signs and lying wonders. So there are many wonders that may deceive the believers so their faith may be shaken because they will see miracles. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So that's important here. Because some people may not stick to the truth, they will love the deception, they love to be deceived. They don't want to believe the truth, but they want the restful life, the uh, comfortable way. So following the Antichrist will be much easier than following the real Christ. So they did not, they will not, you know, um, 
follow the real truth. Also focus on the word of loving the, the truth. Those who love the real truth will be saved. Because, you know, the truth is, can be easily, you know, um, um, can be easily adopted, can be easily believed in. Because it's very true that God is there and God is love and God loves everyone. God came to save us. God is Christ who came to die for everyone and he proved his power, his divine nature by many miracles, by his resurrection, by his ascension to heaven. So we need to believe in his promises. He, be, he promised to come again. So we are waiting for his second coming. But for those who do not love the truth, they will deceive themselves. They will choose not to believe in the truth. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. So why God sending delusions? Actually, because of the stubborn heart, because they rejected the truth. They loved the lie. So according to their situation, to their will, God will offer them the delusion they love to follow. So God is not deceiving anyone, but actually with the very stubborn heart, God is, you know, letting them doing whatever they like. So they will believe in the lie they made and they will be filled with delusions that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Actually, when you look around, you can see many people, you know, um, have pleasure in unrighteousness. Most of the people do not like <clears throat> the life of righteousness. They love the life of lies. They love the lusts. They love to hate each other. They love only themselves. They love the bodily lusts. They love money. So they love to live away from the righteousness. And because of this love, this passion to follow the unrighteous way, they will reject anything related to the truth. They all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So when you study the Old Testament and the New Testament, you can see clearly that there is always a relationship between the truth and the righteousness and the lie and the life of, of wickedness. So if you follow the truth, you should be a good man. You should do good because you will be filled with the spirit of the truth which will make you a righteous man. But if you reject the truth, surely you will follow other gods who are not real gods. So these gods will push you to do all bad things and you will justify whatever you do and you will live your life in a big lie as most of the people living this day. But we are bound to give thanks to God, to God always for you. Again, back to the attitude of St. Paul. After telling them what will happen and warning them again is the false teaching and warning them that the coming of the tough time will may be soon. But again, he's praising God for their faith. So he's saying, we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. In this verse, actually, St. Paul, you know, summarizing the whole Christian beliefs. Because, you know, we were chosen to know God because of our attitude. God, with his foreknowledge, could see that these people will love to follow the truth. Because of his foreknowledge, he chose some people to know him. But he is not choosing people because, you know, out of his will, God wants everyone to be saved. But because of his foreknowledge, he knew before the time that these people 
will respond in a good way to his call, will love to follow the truth. So he's telling the people of this country that you were chosen to go to know God and also you will be saved through the work of the Holy Spirit. So in our Christian faith, we cannot save ourselves. But Christ is the Savior, and he saved us with his redemption. And we will be saved by the work of his Spirit in our hearts. Because the Holy Spirit will sanctify our life. So we will be considered the people of God, the sons of God. Now we will inherit his kingdom of heaven just because we are his people, we are his son. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were called and we accepted the call. We were invited and we followed the invitation. We believed in Christ. We followed him. We were filled with the Holy Spirit through faith, baptism, Eucharist. So we are now in the way to the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught. Wait a minute. There are two types of tradition. The traditions related to men may be full of bad things, of, of lies. But the holy tradition received by the apostles from Christ himself. That's totally the truth revealed by God to the church. So when we speak about the tradition with the capital T, that's the holy tradition. That's the apostolic tradition. It's not people tradition. It's not something people add by themselves or by their will. So here he's speaking about the holy tradition. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught. And this proved that the church had the tradition before writing the New Testament. The church started with no Bible in, in her hand, but she had the truth in her life. She had the Holy Spirit in her heart. She was delivering the salvation to everyone who believed in Christ which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. So the tradition sometimes is verbal. It's not by, by epistles. Some other time it's written. So we may consider the New Testament part of the apostolic tradition. It's the same teaching, the same truth given by Christ to the church and the whole world. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and work. Now he is just praying for them saying that our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father who loved us will bless you, will give you all what's needed in your fight against the devil. He, will, he is covering you with his grace. So don't worry. Whatever the bad timing comes or the evil things around you, wait a minute, the grace of God will guide you and will guard you. God the Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation, good hope by grace, Comfort your hearts. They need this comfort. They need this peace because of the false teaching around them. And establish you in every good work and work, which means that you continue your life of righteousness. You continue doing the good things um, guided by the Spirit. Glory to God. Amen.